And we'll start with some Patriots. There was a Patriots practice yesterday that was covered by the media. They were out there, so there are impressions, there's thoughts. There is actually a development in terms of the depth chart. And so we've been all basketball so far this week. We thought we'd take an hour here and just give you some Patriots right now to lead off this program. We've got plenty of Celtic stuff coming up today for sure. Patrick Beverly is going to be our guest at 3 o'clock. Love it. So, and again, that's always subject to change, but that's what's in the books. Patrick Beverly. If he shows up, I love it. Of the Milwaukee Bucks. And uh, is he working for ESPN, uh, Jimmy? Words? Bar- no, the uh, Barstool. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, better. I have a nice little write-up for you to pre- to talk about his podcast before we get to him. Excellent. All right. So uh, Patrick Beverly from Barstool Sports joins us at 3 o'clock. We'll uh, fill that time with some Patriots thoughts. And, again, that's Alex Van Pelt on the situation at quarterback with Jacoby Brissett still being the guy. However, for the first time that the we- media was able to witness so far this year, Drake May was actually repping behind Jacoby Brissett yesterday ahead of Bailey Zappi, which would – I don't know, imply a move up the depth chart. Maz, your thoughts? Well, that didn't take long. Well, that was pretty quick. They got him up to number two already. So let's see. That took, what, uh, like three weeks? Something like that? Three. I don't remember when OTAs exactly began, so you're going to have to refresh my memory on that. But somewhere in that, uh, in that range, he went from number three on the depth chart to number two. That was quick. That was quick, all because of the footwork. Got to get him on Dancing with the Stars next. Let's work on that. I sense some sarcasm. So really, so let's see. At this pace, he'll be the starter by, let's say, it's June 6th. You know, they have a break in there. August 10th? Like something like that? What are you driving at with your tone, sir? It's dumb. It feels way too contrived, way too convenient. Like all of a sudden in three weeks, he's got the footwork problems nailed down and he's number two on the depth chart and he's ready to challenge for the starting job. If you're number two, you're ready to challenge for the starting job. You're a heartbeat away. How's this a bad thing? You think? He, do you honestly think this kid's ready to be a starting quarterback in the NFL? No, but I think he's ready to be the backup and it's further proof they're ready to get rid of Bailey Zappi, which I'm all for. I just think they're introducing more scrutiny. Basically, I, I don't want to say they're throwing him in the fire just yet, but if he's number two and Brissett plays poorly, then there's going to be, there's all the more reason to clamor for making him the starter. I think it's short-sighted. If I were them, I would have waited. I wouldn't have done it now. I'll tell you that. I'm kind of with Mass. You might be surprised to learn sarcasm. <laughs> I'm comfortable with them going slow. And I've, you know, I've talked about that before you even got in this spot where you sucked and had to take a quarterback three overall because you suck. And, and I've told you for years how I feel about that position and what I think the best way to go about it is. Not the only way, but the best way. And so this is not just about Drake May, as I have no earthly clue. Whether Drake May's ready, not ready, making progress or not making progress. I'll read you the reports from the guys that are down there. Doesn't sound like he's playing all that great. But that's not, it's really just based on that. It's, it's this. I'm trying to be, uh, well, consistent and to have some, uh, some intellectual integrity about the whole thing. I'm comfortable with them going slow with Drake May. That makes me comfortable. If they're going slow with Drake May, that's one of the few things I look at and say they may have a grip on the situation because that would, to me, mean that they are thinking long-term, they're being disciplined, and I'm comfortable with that. So if they move him up the depth chart, Maz, and they increase his workload, if I'm being consistent, wouldn't I say that I'm uncomfortable with that? Correct. Simple as that. I don't know if he's improved in the last week. I don't know if he's earned those reps. I don't know. Doesn't feel like he necessarily has, but again, I don't know. All I know is I'm comfortable with them shelving him for as long as it takes. And if they're going to move him up, that makes me a little uncomfortable. Just being consistent. What if he has wowed them? What if he is showing why he was the number three overall pick? And they said, you know what? This, combined with the fact that Bailey Zappi is strutting around here like the job should be his... Let's give him second reps this week. I, I don't see the harm in it. I really don't. So, Murray, I, the, the thing I would push, there's a lot I would push back on, but the, the Bailey Zappi part really is irrelevant to me. I don't care if it's Bailey Zappi or pick any other guy you want. I To me, it has nothing to do with it. Harold Fenefessi. Drake May is going to pass Bailey Zappi eventually. That's a given. It's just a matter of when. And I look at it as what's the right way to do it? What's the right way to bring him along? And my question would be, how is it no pads, no real, you know, again, they're doing seven on seven and some 11 on 11 now, but, but it's all, 
Yeah, uh, and co- correct me if I'm wrong. Did they put pads on this week? I don't think no, they did. They no, you can't. Okay, I don't. I don't think they do put pads on yet. So how? What has he done in this short period of time to go from three to two? What? 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 Even, what so even what, if he, what did he turn into Tom Brady overnight? But what about just in general trial by fire? Like at some point, I would think we're going to read about him getting. The first reps. Are you guys going to lose your minds then? Like, as coaches... Who's I'm, losing their minds? It, this, it, is, this is... I this said is, it makes it, me uncomfortable. This is toned down losing your minds. This Un- is, this uncomfortable. Is, yeah. I'm comfortable with them going slow. I'm uncomfortable with them rushing them. I feel like they're already caving to some of the pressure. That's what I feel like. That, that would be my concern. So... But at some point, I just think in any avenue of life... Throw him in the fire, see what happens. And you know that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the starter week one or even the starter by week six. But at some point during these practices, I personally would like to see them have him be the the starter you know, on eleven eleven seven on sevens, just to see what the hell happens. So, like I said, it was pretty quick. I'm not out there to tell you how the footwork's coming along or that hitch in his throwing motion. I I'm not there. I, I'll read you the reports. What I do do though is listen and read, and I listen to the press conferences and I listen to what the coaches have to say. And it feels to me like they're still working on him getting the effing play in. Uh, Alex Van Pelt, uh, number one, specifics on the progress, Jimmy. The biggest things we're working on with him right now, obviously uh, calling plays from the huddle, which is new to a lot of these college guys, and then just you know playing in rhythm and in time with your feet, and that's the biggest strides I'd say he's made over the last few weeks. In our system, it's all based on timing and rhythm in the pass game, and I think the left foot forward has always given this offense the best chance to play on time and in rhythm. Okay, so the footwork thing is there. The first part is the one that caught my attention. We're working on getting him to call the plays in the huddle. That struck me. It's like, right. Most of these colleges, they go to the line of scrimmage, the kids in the shotgun the entire time. They go up to the line, they get to the set position, and then he claps his hands. And then they all stand up and they all look at the coach who holds up a pitcher of a duck or something along those lines, a pair of dice. Whatever. Uh, 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 a grapefruit. What am I trying to say? What's the Schmenzer? Uh, the, the, oh, the eggplant. Egg the eggplant. Yeah. The, the pineapple. The coach holds up a pitcher of the Schmenzer, and then they go back and run the play. They don't even call the plays in the huddle. No, it's just a picture. It is wild. That's rampant throw okay. college football. So the pictures, I'm, 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 I'm over dramatizing a touch, but. I, w- I mean, I watched, and then when I went back and watched Drake May, and I watched Tulane football, I watched college football. That's what they do. They go to the line, they set, the quarterback claps, they all stand up, they all look to the sidelines, the, <laughs> the coach puts his hand under his arm and makes some sort of signal, and then they run the play. It's the wing package. The kids don't even call the plays in the huddle. They're still working. They're still working on game to call the play in the huddle. Number two, I think, Jimmy, hold on one second. Yeah, more in the play calling. Number two. It's coming. Uh, it's never easy. Uh, there's some long calls, you know, play calls with 12, 14 words in it that you have to spit out with cans and, you know, get the cadence down, then come up and execute. So there's a lot to it, and there's area for growth there. But uh, that's not an issue with Drake. He's a smart guy at studies, and, you know, when he's out of the building, and he'll nail that. When he says there's areas for growth there, what is he saying? He's not getting it right. Doesn't have it down. Correct. So I, I don't want to over-dramatize it, but it, we have a talk show today. It's June 5th. He said that on June 4th. What he's, what, what's he saying? We have to get him used to not looking over for the pitcher of Daffy Duck to know what play to call. And, oh, by the way, under center. You got to get under center. He's, these college kids are almost never under center. So, like, that hold, like, before you even get to how he throws the deep end cut, or how he diagnoses man versus zone. You first, this is where he is. You actually have to go into the huddle, recite the play. It's 15 words long. Then you have to go to the line of scrimmage, call out the the whatever, the cadence and the audible, and you have to play under center. And we want the footwork to be a certain way, left foot, front, or whatever the hell he said. Oh, his head's going to be spinning. Hey, there's no way. They're still at that stage. Get into the huddle, call the play, then get under center. Well, you don't think that's a good enough reason to make him number two on the depth chart? How could he possibly be moving up? I, I, my worry would be he was repping third, and because we cover it so closely here, and it's we, we Boston being what we are, and the media here being what it is, and the Patriots being as important as they are, we cover it. Uh-oh, Drake May's repping third. Uh-oh, Drake May's not picking up. Uh-oh. 
Gerard Mayo says you earn your reps and you earn your place in the classroom. He's still third. What's wrong? So we do all that. Next thing you know, they show up the next practice and he's repping second. I don't know. I'm more comfortable with them just taking their time and ignore the noise. Yeah, I just think you're more willing, you're more apt to learn more about someone like this if you do throw them right into the fire. It's like, you know, maybe they did see, like, he can't even call these plays out. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing here, and we'll slow this down a little bit. I think you're better off just testing someone early just to see where they're at, and if he's failing those tests again, I, I don't really see the harm in it because you can then drop him back down to third and really take your time with him. So, Murray, look, again, there's a couple ways to do it, right? And I don't necessarily disagree with your assessment of it. I question their motives. I do. I question their motives. Boy, that was quick. That's convenient. So do you think ownership has their thumb on the scale? I don't know. Maybe. Scale? Yes. I, I wouldn't rule anything out. Everything. Everything. I wouldn't rule anything out. I just think it's really convenient. He's been here, what, 10 minutes? And all of a sudden, they've moved him up a spot in the depth chart? Based on what? Well, that's a delicate balance then, and they're going to have to try to do their best to ignore the noise. And I get it. Like in terms of the coaches, you're hired to be fired. You're more you're more apt to listen to ownership and take their quote unquote recommendations, and probably do something that's against your will that you really don't want to do, and put this kid in as the backup, or maybe make him the starter too early. They've got to have some conviction with it. Again, in terms of the practices, OTAs, even when they get to summer camp, throw him in second, throw him in first for some of these eleven on elevens. Fine, see how he does. But they should not. I. I don't care if he doesn't play at all this year. I think that's probably the best avenue to, to take this thing. But they got to have some conviction with it and just say, like, if we've seen something that he's not ready, then he should not be the starter at all, or even the backup going into the season. I'm I'm com- completely uh, of the belief that they're not convicted and they're all over the place. I mean, that's really the bigger issue, I guess. And may- maybe So that's what this is a commentary on or, you know, a, a statement on is that I don't trust them. I don't trust them to get it right. This collaborative process. Well, and, and that it's a collection of kind of ragtag coaches that have been, you know, flame out somewhere else. Gerard Mayo being a first year head coach, like that part, I'm completely with you guys. I don't really like the collection of coaches that they have, and I don't trust that they are going to have conviction to see this thing through correctly. But for now, again, for practices and even camp when they get to it, I have no problem with it. Giardi wrote Boston Sports Journal Drake May finally moved up the quarterback pecking order on Tuesday, working behind Brissett but ahead of Zappi. That news, however, may be bearing the lead. The rookie first rounder rode the struggle bus on the day that featured heavy red zone work. Although he was hardly the only one, Brissett too had issues, A, finding the time to work through his progressions in those tight red zone windows, and B, seeing receivers consistently get open. He said uh, May had to tuck it and run more than once, which is never what you're looking for during these offensive periods. He also fired what some will call a completion to Pop Douglas in the red zone, but in reality would have been a sack long before that with him holding the ball forever. Then there was a pair of interceptions. One around midfield, to be quite frank. It was hard to determine whether he overthrew the underneath receiver or underthrew the corner route. Not good. You don't even know. The ball was so bad, you you don't even know who he was throwing to. (laughs) It was so to nowhere that you couldn't tell if it was to the deep guy or the short guy. No, they asked him and he said, those guys. Bedard wrote <laughs> that uh, the offensive line was the issue with all these guys. This one got me going, too, but keep going. He said, red zone 7-on-7 seven seven was better for the offense. The offense was having a grand old time. Then the offensive line came on the field <laughs> for a regular team period, and the fun stopped, he said. Oh, God. Handoff, sack, sack. May short completion. Handoff after a high snap. Interception. Through three OT, uh, and then he goes on to some other things. So uh, the quarterbacks, none of them look good. May hasn't looked good. You ask Van Pelt about his progress. He said, we'll just, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially he says we're still working on him getting the plays in. And, uh, okay, I just like, I just go really slow. I'm comfortable. If they're going slow and patient, I'm comfortable with that process. I feel there's command and patience there. If they do what every other suck-ass team does, which is suck, draft, play the young quarterback. You're just another suck bag team. Holding him back feels a little different to me. A little, like again, like I said, more patience, more command. So anything they do to hold him back, I'm comfortable with. Anything that looks like they're moving him forward, I get uncomfortable. My thoughts. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Mez here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.